Hi guys, this is Jin here. I uh, just want to share with you guys that uh, there's a new update coming along for the Zigbee 2 MQTT. Uh, anyone actually using the Home Assistant tools that know that uh, Zigbee 2 MQTT is one of the best uh, Zigbee con uh, controller out there. So for those guys who are actually running Zigbee MQTTs, uh, they actually have a new firmware. And this is actually quite important, especially if you're on a new uh, version of ZP3 Power Controller. So where is what actually they changed so far? So let's go to a simple way of explaining it. So one of the key changes so far is actually if you're using the O1.2 firmware for the CC2530 or 31 series, you can actually easily upgrade to the new uh, 3.0 control coordinators easily without need to repair all devices. Previously, all if you're gonna change the devices or anything like that, you have to repair every single Zigbee device in your house, which is a hazard. If you actually imagine your house had like 50 or 60 of them, you're gonna spend the whole afternoon doing this just by alone. And most important that a lot of people didn't understand that previously, two yard Zigbee devices had a lot problem with uh, Z2M, uh, ZB2 MQT, and this version, they actually fixed most of the issue, and I tested it, it worked so great. And last but not least, uh, one, of the, one of the key, one of the chips, uh, substrate you can get around in Malaysia, actually Livoro. Livoro, I'm using a, this smart chip for quite a long time, but I didn't use the ZB version, but they did open an official store in Lazada, and and I actually try a few of them. They are build quality is actually quite nice. I will show you the review after this. Uh, but right now, uh, they actually have more support with it. Not the whole range yet, but most of them can actually can work with these devices right now uh, on Z uh, Z2M itself. Because I think I tested it like half a year ago. Uh, none of the support is there. I had to write my own uh, configurations uh, JS for it. And last but not least is uh, Akara new devices. So apparently. Apparently, Akara had released quite a lot of devices uh, for the last two few months ago. Like I think the H1, the E1 series, and all oh, of this is actually not available in Malaysia yet. Uh, but you, if you actually adventure like me, you actually bought some of them, like the H1 or E1, to actually come and test. Uh, they actually currently supported without you to write your own code for them to run. And last but not least, uh, there's a new version coming from Texture Instruments. They have a new version of the ZB controller coming out soon and this version uh, of the firmware actually support the new uh, versions uh, if you like me uh, you're gonna try to explore, explore about it like for example you turn your zigbee into something a lora controller as well uh, yes uh, this is a firmware you need and they actually fix a lot of the implementation issues uh, for example the group table and be implementations. Uh, this one is actually key if you have like more than 100 devices. It's actually quite a lot of miss up. And parent devices child aging. So this is a problem that feels really faced by the uh, if you have a few router in your Zigbee uh, locations and you're actually specific that oh this router can only join these few devices uh, then and, and, and devices and some of the router do not accept new connections. Uh, the previous firmware has some issue about it because they will not respect that uh, setting and actually will re rejoin the every single thing and actually ping your whole network and create a lot of noise and interference and, and make your whole network a bit sluggish. And last but not least, there's a lot of security fix in the ZB stack. Uh, this firmware will actually update it and actually fix all the things. And according to the, uh, uh, the, the, according to the Z2M guys itself, they actually increase the Mac buffer, increase performance and message pass. Uh, I haven't tested it because right now my Zigbee network is actually very, very robust already. And uh, this is actually a needed feature for a lot of them. Uh, LED control was broken, I think, two firmware before this and right now it's at the back end. So basically, it's technically just basically uh, can turn on and off your LED. <coughs> uh, this is actually a key, key thing to do actually. Uh, especially right now there are a lot of new uh, adapters, uh, coordinator, come, ZB coordinator coming out. So able to actually turn it on and off on the firmware itself is a good addition back to the system. And last but not least, 
is actually it will forward the message to host even when the profile already doesn't match. So this was an issue people see that for example a lot of non-compliant Zigbee devices it's actually very hard to actually uh, get Z2M to actually recognize it because they don't even forward the message to you. So you actually cannot use that information to write a code for them to accept it. So this firmware fix it. So okay. But this this reason why I make this video is actually there's a lot of issues that Fed need to fix do this firmware fixing. So what you need to do before flashing it is that so first of all you have to make sure your HA as an instant, your host the instance is actually uh, 2020 and on the July onward because they have a new select options for the MQTT discovery and this is what this uh, firmware we're using right now they will use a select entity and before this all this uh, before uh, July's editions there is no support for this so you have to update your HA if you don't do not update this uh, ZB Mgdt this this version and do not use the new firmware. And last but not least, you have to update the new add-on first because previous add-on has a bug, so actually quite a serious bug. Uh, if you actually like me, you actually try to flash uh, test around with the firmware itself, you notice your every time you refresh your firmware, you have to repair the devices because there's a bug in the whole Zigbee to Mgdt implementations. They forgot to do the backup, so. This this firmware fix it. So this 1.21 uh, ZB to MQTT, they finally fix the bug backup issue. So you don't need to refresh or re repair all the network again. So last but not least, before I do it, make sure you restart your HA instance. I mean, either restart a supervisor or start and stop the add-on itself to trigger the back or uh, the backup on the coordinator or backup adjacent. So this is actually very key. So that, that then this will be done. So actually, how to fetch the whole, whole process? Actually, very simple. So I'm gonna show you here step by step. So easily is you basically download the whole. Uh, you can actually go to TI website. You download the Uniflash software. Download here, Uniflash. Once you downloaded, you can actually come to here and actually plug in your device. So when the device is plugged in, then you just go to setting. Utility, you had to erase all the sectors, all the entire flash area. So you come here, erase entire flash. This is the one you have to select. Erase it. So then you actually erase all the firmware itself. So next you're gonna do is actually go up to here program load itself you have to select all unprotected sector and perform a blank check so it will be checked the device is blank itself is it okay then last but not least you go back to the program page here go to the flash image here take a browse and let's see my Wow, this is the latest one, uh, 2021, uh, July 8th. So this binary will be, uh, then you just, just load the binary in. And, and wait for it to start loading in. And that's it. Your Zigbee Tamgiti is now flashed to the new versions. And can use it for a lot of uh, the devices so a lot of people will be asking actually what is so special about this uh, Zigbee to coordinator thing so I just kind of come here to a very simple explanations so for, for example uh, a lot of people actually buy it from Lazada or Shopee or those e-commerce website they bought the old versions uh, there are actually two two or three company actually producing the Zigbee coordinator for a very long time right now Taxi Instrument is one of the earliest one. In fact, they are the one of the leaders in uh, Zigbee. They are the main push about Zigbee, the, uh, the hardware itself. So a lot of the Zigbee devices are actually using the old CC two five three X series. So there's three zero three one and three eight. So these are actually very very old devices. Zigbee has been existed in the uh, the whole home automation 
since the whole IoT's era for a very very long time and right now is we're looking at almost 22 years right uh right right now so uh it not 22 years 11 years right now so so we're looking at the problem right now is this chip versions of the big CZB coordinator they doesn't support uh, uh 3.0 in fact you can actually try to flash it to 3.0 but it will not work that well because they are limited memories limited processing power and 3.0 requires a lot of security handovers that require a lot of encryptions and a lot of CPU resources actually needed so they actually can't support it and last but not least they are able to hold a very big routing table uh, small routing tables also mean that you only can use almost 15 to 20 devices onto this uh, controller uh, the whole network only can hold it that much and the problem with this is actually uh, those, although theoretically they can support up to 32 devices or 31 you minus off the router itself so the only problem is all these devices actually hit a certain limit around 20 devices and you start to have feel very sluggish for example you press the buttons it will take or two or three seconds before the message go over there and actually uh, trigger the, the, the actuation itself so usually this is the one that we only use if you have a small zigbee network uh, it's one of the good thing about it is actually very very cheap uh, CC2531 you can get it in a very very low cost around 10 USD or right, 30 or 40 ringgit and if you are good you will be choosing the one with the PA uh, PA devices a power amplifier itself or low noise amplifiers and we come with a CC2592 and this one PA can give you around 15 to 20 dBm boost uh, usually they sell in pairs the one with, usually with the antenna one usually is the one that sell together with the PA and year 2020 uh, 2019 they actually released a new version the update to CC253 series uh, which is a CC2562 R, R, B and P uh, these are the more powerful versions they can support up to 200 devices uh, the, only, uh, the difference between R, R, B and P is of course the, the functionality they support R is the most basic one, uh, the cheapest one you can get. In fact, all a lot of those adapters out there, they build using their own PCB itself that for DIY. They a lot of them using the R and B R B series. So the B is actually the same thing, just that without the crystal resolution. So you actually don't need to buy another crystal and make the cost actually slightly cheaper. Uh, then they release the P series. P series is something with the power amplifier on top. So so the one two, two, uh, 2560p come with a 19 dBm PA support but the problem is uh, until last two firmware update CC2562p doesn't support the uh, the PA output because uh, the firmware guy didn't actually code the system uh, the code the code in but uh, the last Last two firmware they fix it, they fix the issue. They actually, you actually can set the uh, setting right now to actually increase the uh, 20 dBm into your home assistant to actually make it uh, coverage much more area. So, so the power amplifier actually make your coverage higher. So without like for example without the power amplifier you using around 5 dBm. A 5 dBm is around one to two rooms uh, of the range. Mean that if your Zigbee devices is blocked up by two or three wall you most probably won't get heated or uh, connected to the, the nearest zb devices but with 20 dbm you can cover most of the whole entire floor of the house easily and if you have a proper antenna everything i think three or four story is no issue so uh, then the last but not least is actually a cc 1352 p series a 1352 p series is a much more higher end version of 2562 p they support sub gigahertz so you can do LoRa's or can do those uh, uh, RF frequency they are they are the uh, 2562 P can only do 2.4 gigahertz whereby the 1352 P can actually do 800s 400s megahertz and up to 2.4 gigahertz it's a much, much more versatile program and it actually have a higher power PA as well uh, the PA in uh, uh, 1352 P is around 20 dBm and this year they released a new, new release version 
they come with more RAMs and more flash and that's about it. So there's another contestant coming in, uh, a lot of those people who actually want to upgrade to from, from CC 2533X, uh, they, they don't want to spend a lot of money on the, the new TI versions. They actually, the, the China version actually come out with a lot of silicon lab, uh, silicon gap ER, ER32MG and usually they are the 21 series lab. These are the 21s. Uh, version of it and they actually in a lot of the sonoc devices uh, sonoc zigbee devices all using efr mg21 and these are actually the new zigbee 3.0 series uh, compared to the cc 253x uh, these are much better versions so they are not as quite stable as the rest of the ti module that in my in my opinions but they are actually much powerful uh, compared to the old one and they actually are quite cheap so you can consider that and technically right now zigbee to mqdt actually supported this as well uh, you can actually flash a coordinator software from the zigbee mqdt itself so that's all for today and hope you guys like it